Hey there, folks. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. You know, it's been a while since I talked about the Looney Tunes on my blog show. In fact, the last few times I talked about them was during my blogs of Tiny Toon Adventures, How I Spent My Vacation, and Space Jam. And while I do enjoy watching these films from time to time, I do miss the old days when the classic Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies would air on TV. But I think this could give me an incentive to buy the cartoons on DVD someday. But anyway, on the topic of the Looney Tunes, I'll be blogging an underrated movie from the early 2000s, which became, unfortunately, a failed attempt to revive the Looney Tunes. But does it hold up these days? Well, let's find out. Released on November 14th, 2003, the movie is Looney Tunes Back in Action. Now let's get started. Sick of setting the spotlight to Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck is unceremoniously fired by studio boss Kate Houghton when he demands equal pay and billing. Daffy goes on a studio lot rampage, taking down security guard DJ Drake in the process, who is also sacked. But when DJ's A-list actor dad is kidnapped by the evil Acme chairman, DJ and Daffy try to rescue him while also being pursued by Kate and Bugs Bunny. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, this movie was absolutely action-packed, hilarious, and just plain fun. But, to further explain why I love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. A follow-up to Space Jam was planned as early as the film's release. As development began, Space Jam 2 was going to involve a new basketball competition between the Looney Tunes and a new villain named Berserko. Artist Bob Camp was tasked with designing Berserko and his henchmen. Joe Pitka would have returned to direct, and Spike Brandt and Tony Shervon signed on as the animation supervisors. However, Michael Jordan did not agree to star in a sequel. According to Camp, a producer lied to design artists, claiming that Jordan had signed on in order to keep development going. Warner Brothers eventually canceled plans for Space Jam 2. The film then re-entered development as Spy Jam and was to star Jackie Chan. Warner Brothers was also playing a film titled Race Jam, which would have started Jeff Gordon. Both projects were ultimately canceled. Warner Brothers eventually asked Joe Dante to direct Back in Action, Having had such previous success with Gremlins from 1984 and Inner Space from 1987, in the early 1990s, Dante wanted to produce a biography comedy with HBO called Termite Terrace. It centered around director Chuck Jones' early years at Warner Brothers in the 1930s. On the project, Dante recalled, it was a hilarious story, and it was very good, except that Warner Brothers said, Look, it's an old story. It's got period stuff in it. We don't want that. We want to rebrand our characters, and we want to do, well, Space Jam. Dante agreed to direct Back in Action as a tribute to Jones. He and screenwriter Larry Doyle reportedly wanted the film to the anti-Space Jam, as Dante disliked how the film represented the Looney Tunes brand and personalities. Dante said that he was making a movie for them with those characters, the Looney Tunes back in action, and they did not want to know about those characters. They didn't want to know why Bugs Bunny shouldn't do hip-hop. It was a pretty grim experience all around. Warner Brothers also hired Walt Disney Feature Animation's Eric Goldberg, most known for his 
fast-paced, Warner Brothers-inspired animation of the genie in Disney's Aladdin to direct the animation. Also to note, this was the final film to be scored by composer Jerry Goldsmith, who sadly died less than a year after the film's release. This was also the final film to be produced by Warner Brothers Feature Animation. One of the things I like in this movie is the interaction between the live action and animation. Also, I think placing the Looney Tunes in a movie like this must have been hard for the film crew. Plus, this wouldn't be a Looney Tunes movie without some hilarious comedy scenes. And the scenes in this movie are absolutely hilarious. Like a few chase sequences and the final climax in space. However, there are some parts of the movie that have some innuendo in this. Also, I do like the amount of Looney Tunes cameos in this movie, like Porky Pig, Speedy Gonzales, Foghorn Leghorn, Pepe Le Pew, Dr. Lori, including two non-Looney Tune characters, like Shaggy Rogers and Scooby-Doo. Not only that, but there are several live-action cameos in this movie, like Matthew Lillard, Jeff Gordon, Roger Corman, and of course, Michael Jordan. Plus, I do like the certain places where our main heroes go on their mission, like Las Vegas, the Nevada Desert, Paris, France, and of course, the African jungle. Also to note, as I watched this movie, I could easily spot references from films like James Bond, Star Wars, Madeline, Indiana Jones, and the Pink Panther. Speaking of which, let's talk about an important subject in this movie, the Blue Monkey Diamond. Now, with a name like that, you can instantly think that it's similar to the Pink Panther Diamond. But unlike the Pink Panther Diamond, the Blue Monkey has supernatural powers to turn people into monkeys and then back again. And, of course, it would be bad if it fell into the wrong hands. In the movie, the diamond is hidden in an ancient ruin in the African jungle and is guarded by a river of lava, as well as some dangerous obstacles like a huge boulder and monkey statues that shoot poison darts. Anyway, now that we got Mustang notes out of the way, let's move on to the cast. Our main lead, DJ Drake, is played by Brendan Fraser, who got to be in the Mummy Trilogy, George of the Jungle, Journey to the Center of the Earth, and The Nut Job. Now, DJ is the son of the Warner Brothers movie star, Damian Drake, and he worked at Warner Brothers Studios part-time as a security guard, while boasting a few stunt roles. But, as the story opens, he aims to actually have a higher-profile starring career, based on his own skills, rather than his family's support. Unfortunately, his disastrous attempt to eject the recently fired Daffy Duck from the studio results in him getting fired too. Anyway, in my opinion, DJ is a cool guy, and I think he has the potential to be a great stuntman and spy. Next we have Kate Houghton, the VP of Comedy, played by Jenna Elfman, who got to be in Dr. Doolittle and Clifford's really big movie. To me, Kate is a typical no-nonsense kind of woman. Also, I think she's an okay supporting character, though I don't really ship her and DJ. Next we come to the Acme Chairman, 
the villain of the film, played by Steve Martin, whom I've talked about in my blogs of Little Shop of Horrors, DreamWorks Home, and Fantasia 2000. In my eyes, Mr. Chairman is it well, he's pretty sarcastic for a villain. His evil plan is to use the Blue Monkey's power on his Acme satellite to turn the human race into monkey slaves to manufacture Acme goods and then turn them back to people to buy their stuff. Plus, he has five villainous Looney Tunes working for him, but I'll get to them later. Next we have Dusty Tales, played by Heather Locklear who got to be in Batman the Animated Series. Dusty is a showgirl who was performing at Yosemite Sam's Casino. She also got to sing in six Damien Drake films, and she's an undercover agent. When DJ and Daphne meet her, she gives them a Queen of Diamonds playing card with the Mona Lisa's face on it. Next we have the head of Area 52, Mother, played by Joan Cusack, who got to be in the Toy Story sequels, Chicken Little, Hoodwink 2, and ugh, Mars Needs Moms. <clears throat> anyway, in my opinion, Mother is an interesting character, and I think her base in Area 52 is... Pretty cool, with all the contained aliens, who are all from old sci-fi B-movies, including Marvin the Martian. Also, her robot assistant, Robbie, is very helpful. Anyway, Mother's role in this movie is to, well, reconstruct Daffy Duck back to normal after one of her guards oozed him. Plus... She shows DJ a video about the Blue Monkey and what Acme is planning to do with it. Mother also gives DJ some spy gear in the form of a cell phone, as well as some new pants. She also tells DJ that the Queen of Diamonds playing card is the window into what lies behind her smile. Next we come to DJ's dad. Damien Drake, played by Timothy Dalton, who got to be in two James Bond films, Toy Story 3, Tales from Earth Sea, and the Tinkerbell movie, Secret of the Wings. Damien Drake was Warner Brothers' biggest stars, and he's a secret agent who was trying to find the blue monkey and destroy it before the chairman gets his hands on it. Unfortunately, Acme becomes aware of, of Damien's assignment and kidnaps him. Now let's move on to the Looney Tune characters and their voice actors, starting with Bugs Bunny. Voiced by the late Joe Alasky, who also did voice work in Tiny Toon Adventures, Casper, and Rugrats. Now, as mentioned before, Bugs is my favorite Looney Tune, and I really like his role in this movie as a supporting character. Plus, I do like the many cartoon gags that Bugs does in this film, like when he's in a boat fishing for Nemo, doing a psycho stunt in DJ's shower, putting popcorn in Spaceman, and when he fights Marvin the Martian with a carrot lightsaber, Star Wars styled. Joe Alasky also provides the voice for Daffy Duck. In the movie, Daffy feels underappreciated alongside his envy of Bugs' popularity, which gets him fired from Warner Brothers. He goes on an adventure with DJ to battle the Acme Corporation and save DJ's father, but his real purpose for coming is to get his hands on the Blue Monkey Diamond for himself. To me, Daffy can sometimes be obnoxious, but 
but he's still very funny, and he does get a lot of character development. Some of my favorite things that Daffy does in this film, well, are when he becomes Duck Dodgers during the final climax, and it is pretty funny when he gets his tail on fire, and when he gets flattened by a boulder. Next we come to Yosemite Sam, voiced by veteran voice actor Jeff Bennett. In the movie, Sam owns a casino in Las Vegas. He is signed by the chairman to capture DJ and Daffy and get what they came for. To me, Sam is a rowdy Looney Tune character, and I find it funny when he gets slammed by Foghorn during a game of Flapjack, and when he steals Jeff Gordon's car while chasing DJ and Daffy through the Las Vegas streets. Sadly, Wiley Coyote is a silent character and has no voice actor. But still, Wiley is a funny character, even when he speaks with signs. What Wiley does in this movie, other than chase the Roadrunner, is attempt to use a missile launcher to destroy our main heroes, but unfortunately, he ends up getting blown up instead. And later, he sets Damien Drake on an underground railroad to be run over by the Acme Train of Death, as well as putting TNT around him and a two-ton anvil above him. Next up is Marvin the Martian, voiced by animator Eric Goldberg, who not only animated the genie in Aladdin, but also animated Maui's Tattoos in Moana, the 2006 Pink Panther intro, and Rhapsody in Blue from Fantasia 2000. In this film, Marvin is held prisoner in Area 52 along with other aliens, but after he receives a mission from the Acme chairman, he uses his ray gun to free himself and the other aliens to attack our main heroes. Later in the film, the chairman sends Marvin to put the blue monkey on the Acme satellite and stop anyone who gets in his way with his bubble gun. We also have Elmer Fudd, voiced by another veteran voice actor, Billy West. Despite the fact that Elmer has been trying to hunt down bugs a lot in many Looney Tunes cartoons, Elmer in this movie is secretly evil. I find the scene where Elmer chases Bugs and Daffy through many of the paintings in the Louvre not just funny, but also artistic. We also have the vicious Tasmanian Devil voiced by Brennan Fraser. You know, the same guy who plays DJ in the movie. This character is considered as Acme's vicious operative, though he doesn't really do too much in this movie other than eating one of the Acme VIPs, as well as disguising himself as Tweety and marrying a female Tasmanian devil. And finally, we have Granny, voiced by the late voice acting queen, June Ferre. Granny, along with Tweety Bird and Sylvester, are DJ's neighbors in this movie. However, when the gang are in Africa looking for the blue monkey, they come across Granny and her pets riding on an elephant. They escort DJ and the gang to the ruins where the blue monkey diamond is hidden. Unfortunately, after they find said diamond, it is revealed that Granny is actually Mr. Chairman in disguise, along with Mr. Smith disguised as Sylvester. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Looney Tunes Back in Action is a really fun and underrated movie. I love the comedy 
and the action in this movie. I love the different places featured, like Las Vegas, Area 52, the Nevada Desert, Paris, France, and Africa. Plus, I like the interaction between the live action and animation. The main characters, like DJ and Kate, are interesting characters, though I don't ship them. And I think Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck get some great chemistry as friends. The other Looney Tunes featured in this movie have interesting roles as either cameos or antagonists. And the villain, the Acme Chairman, is a very sinister and sarcastic villain. If you folks are interested in seeing this movie, then be sure to pick it up. And I think this movie is worth watching if you have kids to share it with, or if you were once a fan of Looney Tunes. I give this film a 96% out of 100. Well, in the words of Porky Pig, that's all, folks. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power.